first day or within the first couple days, I mentioned that when you talk about web development, um, you're really balancing two different skills. You're balancing a set of technical skills and a set of design skills. And the technical skills are about how to do something. How do you make a link? How do you um, make the page be a different color? How do you change the font on a page? How do you put an image on your page? And so on. And so there's technical questions of just how you do something. The other half of the equation um, is the design, which says how do you use these technical elements effectively to communicate? And the two things go hand in hand, right? If you don't do it right technically, then nothing's going to work, all right? But if you don't do it right from a design perspective, you may have all the tags right and all the code right, but you're not com effectively communicating your message, and you're not allowing the users to do what they want to do or what they need to do on your website. So both the design part and the technical part are important. So over the next few classes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit today about good design and what constitutes a well-designed website. And um, that's, part, that, that's part of your next assignment, is to come up with some rules and come up with some examples of a well-designed and poorly designed website. Um, so you'll do that. Um, we'll then segue into uh, discussing the project. And your goal is to make a well-designed site for your project. Well, we follow a certain methodology, a certain set of steps to come up with uh, the design for a website. And we'll talk about those. Um, because good websites, sort of the, 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 the bottom line is good websites don't happen by accident. Good websites are the result of careful planning, careful consideration, um, and then are executed well. So you have both the design perspective and the um, technical perspective. To start out, um, say you want to have an example of either a good or bad website that you would like to discuss. Yes? <laughs> sure. How, and how do you spell that? Pennyjuice.com. All right, let's bring it up. And, and don't say right off the bat, don't say now if it's a good bad, or a bad example. We'll bring it up and we'll let, we'll let the class decide if they think it's. <laughs> I, I hope, I, yeah. Penny. It's requiring Flash. Oh. Oh, I, we do have Flash installed. OK. All right. All right, there we go. That's the Flash version. Flash is uh, a program. Um, to accomplish animation, it's sort of not used a lot anymore. Well, given that the copyright is 2001, 2002, that might have been your first hint on that. Oh, who is Penny Juice? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I think we've decided that this is an example of a, of a poor website. What is bad about it? The text is in Comic Sans. The text is in Comic Sans. Yeah, some of the text is, like this. Some of it looks like Times New Roman. Little too much color, OK? Um, Overkill, all right, on the color. And what's bad with having too much color? It's distracting, all right? Does it look good? No, it doesn't look good. But 
Probably almost worse than that is that it's distracting. In other words, color used judiciously, used carefully, can draw attention to something. Right? If you have a page that is all gray and you have a red square on it, your eye is drawn to that red square because it's something different. All right? Humans are programmed that way. If, they, if you see something that's different, it stands out. It draws your attention. So that's a good way to, to focus your attention on that. Now when you go here, given that everything is a different color, just about, nothing focuses your attention. None of these paragraphs like grab you and, and force you to look at them. There's no rhyme or reason for the color. They just decided to pick a different color for everything. Oh, we could have fun with this one. This might be what we all we do today is just have some fun with this with this site. What else don't we like about it? The animations are really weird. The animations are really weird on the animated version of the site. Okay. Distracting from the actual links. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of them because it's almost more fun to talk about bad design than to talk about good design, right? What else don't we like at it? About it? Pardon me? Oh, the a rainbow of exciting flavors, yes. You have no idea what it is. Ah, excellent. That would be another thing I would say, is looking at this, I don't know what penny juice is. I sort of have to dig into it to, to find out what it is. Like, if I go, who is penny juice? First of all, I, I think that penny juice is a person then, given that it says, who is penny juice? All right. And this provides some sort of hints. I love the prompt, uh, promptus of service, easing, easy mixing boy. I love the variety of flavors, spelled with an E. I am 110% pleased. As TH director of a university affiliated, but all caps is probably not good too. Um, what is penny juice? Okay, finally we're getting across to what it is. All right, penny juice is 100% blended fruit juice concentrate that's specially designed for child care centers, preschools, head starts, etc. All right, finally we find out what that is. Wouldn't it be great if that was like part of the banner on the home page? So as soon as you landed on this site, oh, that's what this is. This isn't like a Orange Julius where you could go at the mall and get it or whatever. This is, that's what that is. So you identify it first. So. That would be very, very useful. Um, we talked about overkill. And the interesting thing is, the interesting thing is, is whoever developed this site probably is really proud of it, right? Or at least was at the time. Because they used all their skills in making everything a different color. The, the, the sort of sad truth, though, is if they would have spent less time on this site, it probably would have ended up being better. Right? If they would have just gone with a basic black and white with maybe a splash of color here or there, they'd have been better off than spending all this time to, to try to make it uh, look good. All right? And I think that's a common theme. And there, there's, there's a few different flavors of bad sites. Just, there's a rainbow of flavors of bad sites, just like there's a rainbow of flavors of penny juice. Right? But one of the flavors of bad size is overkill, where people simply use everything that they've learned in trying to make the site. Um, one thing I absolutely don't like is having the, the two versions of the site, is having a Flash and an HTML. Um, I mean, I understand why they did it, but two versions of the site means what? Twice the work. They change Penny Juice's formula or something, and they add more vitamin C, that's two places they have to make that change, or, or whatever. All right. Um, so again, 
this is a common drawback of people when they first start doing web development. At least it used to be. I will say my students are better about this, probably because they've been around and, and, and have seen websites since they were a kid, so they know what constitutes a good and bad website, sort of intuitively. But um, there's some developers that treat web development as like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet, where your goal is to do as much as you possibly can. You know, if you haven't eaten a plateful of every menu option at all you can eat buffet, you feel like you failed, right? Well, it's the same thing here. If you don't put everything that you learned in every single page and change the color, change the paragraphs and all that, um, you know, some web designers think, well, they didn't do their job. So this is a good example of a bad site for all those reasons that we have talked about. Does anyone else have an example of either a good or bad site? Yes? Okay. I am awesome.com. Wow. You found my site, I see. Is it one, any punctuation or? It's true. Oh, it is it's not even any HTML tags, just it's true. <laughs> now, uh, now, the only thing I'll say about this is this obviously isn't the site for a business. This is someone's idea of just having fun. Maybe they put it on their business card or something. It is, it's just a joke. So you know, I tend to be generous when you come to sites like this because this is funny and, and this clearly isn't meant to be a site. Just like I, I tend not to uh, be too critical, like if you run a, a, a across like an amateur site, like someone has a My Little Pony fan site or something, you know. I'm, I'm not going to criticize those too harshly because it's just someone doing it for the heck of it. The ones that I, I tend to judge harshly are the ones that like are for like a real business people that should know better you know if you're if you're a kid that's playing around making a website because you learn how to do it in school and you just want to have fun with it then do whatever you want have fun you know you have my blessing people out there in YouTube land but uh, for businesses they ought to know better anyone have other examples of a well-designed website or poorly designed website Okay, Apple, that was the one that we talked about a little bit last week. And what do we like about this? Okay, it's simple. Straight to the point. Pardon me? Consistent. Consistent. Repeat that, please. OK, uh, let's finish up on this one. I'll spend another minute or two on this one, and we'll go for a bad one. Easy to navigate. Readable. Readable. OK. The two people that spoke hold your thoughts. Readable. It's funny. You know, Sometimes you say, like, well, that goes without saying, you know, well, of course the site's going to be readable. Well, not when you encounter sites that aren't readable. There are sites that either have, like, really small fonts or poor color combination choices and so on. So readability, you would think that you would assume that for websites. But that is a real important consideration, is to make sure that the text is readable. All right, we had a couple other? Okay. Is recognizable, and that's a really good word. It, it, it is. Um, you see the site. You know, if we if we like change the words on here, you probably would still know it being an Apple site, simply because it has a look. If you're familiar with Apple products, it is very consistent, so it's well branded. Yes. I, I, I was going to say that it, it, it's 
if it's the theme of the products, again, they want to portray the, the apples, as, and again, regardless of what your opinion of apples, they want to portray them in a certain light as being very simple, very intuitive, um, and, and their, their site expresses that. So the site is uh, in line with the goals of the organization and their products. We had another... MrBottles.com. You know, I haven't even seen this one, but I know what I'm betting on. Well, you already said it's a bad site, right? Is it just MR Bottles? Okay. I'm always leery about typing in URLs, so I, I turn off the screen usually. Good. Yeah, you never, if you mis mistype exactly, you never know what you're going to get. All right, Mr. Bottles. Let me reload this so you can take in the full. I, I'm not crazy about the font, but I wouldn't say this is that bad. Yeah. Okay. And I... Okay. Yeah, I, I always hate when uh, places change their websites between semesters, like, and I try to pull it up as a bad example, and, and it turns out that, that they improved it. And it's like, how disappointing you guys actually improved your site. Yeah, this one was kind of bad. Yeah. Um, any, any other ones? Oh, this, this is a classic. This one, gets, uh, this one must be on some list of, and, and how do you spell that? Dot com. I remember this one. To fully appreciate this one, we have to. Well, yeah, turn on the sound. That's a good one. I can hear, I don't know if you guys can. <laughs> to really fully appreciate this, let's reload it. I actually didn't take that long. We have our... A note, I live inside this website, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh, a new song. Yeah, yeah really. Oh, okay, sure. So part of me almost wants to say, this is a fun site to be on, right? Now what's wrong with that mentality? It's a fun site to be on because I'm just looking at it and watching it and laughing. I'm not actually trying to find something on this site. If you could imagine I was trying to buy a car on this site, I can't imagine. I would spend all day looking at the dog and like, oh, what a nice dog, you know? Good boy, good boy. Yeah, there's a cat just jumped out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And, and that is, I, I will say, that is, you know, you know how some movies are like, so, my friends were telling me about a movie called Rubber, about a tire that attacks, yeah, that attacks people, that's like so bad that it's like fun to watch. You almost wonder if that's what they were going after here. 
Wow. I, I really need to watch that one. But the idea is, is if that was their goal, that's real, real risky, right? Because um, more often than not, you're going to have people that are actually trying to find things and, you know, calling their friends around to look at it and laugh at it and have fun with it and forget that they were buying a car in the first place, right? So, um, and again, what was wrong with that? Obviously, overkill. Now, there's actually some more serious problems with that. For example, people that are prone to seizures, the animation and things like that could actually set off seizures. Now, I don't know if those particular um, um, animations uh, could be problematic or not. But um, also, people with ADHD um, are uh, easily distracted and can move away from that, uh, can, can move away from their goals by, by um, sites that have too much stuff on them. Does anyone have an example of a good website besides Apple? Yes. Repeat that. You need a budget.com. You need a budget.com. Is that is that a website or is that just an observation uh, about about my lifestyle or, or something? Okay. I I thought you saw me, you know, dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. It's like you need a budget, man. You need a budget. You need a budget.com Okay. No, oh, there it is. Um, I'm not going to log in, but let's take the tour. Oh, look, they have a budget, and now they can enjoy ice cream. Okay, what do you like about this? Uh, I think uh, right, right in at the home page, it's pretty clear what the message is and what they're trying to sell. It really tells you to try it for three to 34 days right before the top of it. tells you what, what it's there for. Okay, that's very good. That's the opposite of um, which one? Penny juice, where we kind of had to dig around to figure out what, what was penny juice. Was it a person, a thing, or whatever? Um, this, again, immediately, this is obviously some kind of tool to help you gain total control of your money. All right? So right off the bat, it identifies. Uh, we are not overwhelmed on the page. There's graphics. And there are different colors, and there's pictures, but they're used in a purposeful way, as, as opposed to on just a haphazard, let's throw everything we can think of on the page and, and hope that something sticks with the user. Um, let's look at the tour. Now, the tour, notice that most of the text is one color, this kind of looks like a dark blue, or maybe a dark gray. But periodically, they have a splash of color. And the effect of that is that indicates that there's something different about this text. This text is being emphasized. It's different than everything else. So it draws your attention to it as opposed, again, to poor penny juice, where everything was a different color, therefore nothing was emphasized. This, a few things have a different color, and therefore those things really stand out to the user. All right? Anyone else have either a good or bad example? You did your work, definitely. You, yeah. Uh, whoever, whoever had Ling's cars did their work. Uh, so yeah. Um, I'm gonna, here's, a, here's an example of one that I think is good. Um, and, it's, it, and it's funny. You know, I, I think web users now are a lot more sophisticated than they were back like when I first started teaching web development. Because uh, I've always used this as an example of a, a well-designed site. And usually in the past, people like, what? But now I think people get it. But an example of a really well-designed site, I would say, is Google. 
All right? There's almost nothing there. Well, yeah, that's the point. All right? What does it mean by the fact that this is so simple and this is so sparse? It's just a search engine. What do you use Google for? You use Google to find stuff about other stuff, all right, to find other websites. Therefore, your end goal isn't to, to spend time on Google. Your end goal is to find what you're looking for and look, look at it. Therefore, there is sparse. It, there's nothing standing in your way of using it. There's a, there's a single text box on the screen, and your cursor is placed in it. There's two buttons. Ooh, they really got fancy with that, two buttons. One for Google search and one for I'm feeling lucky, which I would never press, right? Um, oh, OK. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and uh, what, what's another consequence of, of the fact that there's so little on this page? It loads fast, all right? So this will load fast, and this will load fast even on a slow internet connection. Now, they do some things to make it a little more fun, like on special occasions, they will put, they'll have a, a different Google Doodle, you know, if it's some famous person's birthday or some historical figure's birthday or a holiday or whatever. They'll have, they'll have, uh, they'll have something, uh, instead of the plain Google graphic, they'll have this, all right? Now, Oh, okay, let, let, let's finish up this one, all right? Now, there are other things that you can do on this page, all right? So that's sort of a, a key, and we've talked a little bit about this when we talked about a footer, all right? Is that websites allow people to do the common things that they want to do easily, but also allow you to do other things, too, all right? So most people coming to Google are doing a search. But there are some people coming to Google that might want to go to Google Maps or go to YouTube or go to their access their Google Drive account or access Google Translate. All right. I think Google does a really good job on um, um, design because all their products are really geared and fine-tuned to do that one thing that they are meant to do well. So if I go to Google Translate, I have two boxes. And I can pick what I want to translate to. So I can um, click and, and translate between English and Spanish. And it will show me the definition and different translations. And there's other tools here that will allow you to like listen to how it's pronounced, to copy it, to share it, all right, to uh, save it to your phrase book. Now, Google allows you to use it without being logged on, which is good. It kind of bugs me when sites force you to be logged on to view their content. I, I understand why they do it, but um, Google allows you to do the basic functionality, but it provides you with some uh, advanced functionality and some motivation if you are logged on, all right? So, for example, here, you can save it to your phrase book. Uh, I assume you'd have to be logged on to do that, because I don't think the whole world is sharing a single phrase book. All right? So this is very geared for what the users are going to do on this site. All right, bad example. Um, ugly toe. Ugly, <laughs> I'm definitely turning the screen off for this one. Ugly. Wow. You know what I will say about this? I don't think this one's that far off. It's not good, but a little bit of, of work on this, I think they could make it to a good site. I, it's a little busy, right. 
I don't know if we need all of these. We don't need to see a picture of their van, which, by the way, is distorted. All right. Remember we talked about the aspect ratio of an image? They, when they resize this, they made the width shorter than the height, so it sort of squashed the truck. I don't know what this, oh, the leave is about their coating. Um, you see, it doesn't really add anything. If anything, I'm puzzled, like, why are they showing a leave? Are they going to line my tub with these leaves so I can make a giant pot of tea in it or what? I don't know. Um, ugly drain. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, the links don't really stand out a lot. Um, again, Comic Sans kind of gives an uh, uh, unprofessional look to it. Um, so I would agree that this is not well designed, but this isn't hopeless. There's, there's hope. If you're out there from ugly tubs, there's hope for you. Just a few tweaks and you'd be going in the right direction. A little busy, a little, um, a little amateurish. You know, they didn't dot the I's and cross the T's on this. Um, there's some very simple things that you can do, to, again, that would take and, and improve a, a look of a site like this, I think, quite a bit um, without spending a lot of effort on that. All right. So if we were going to come up with a list of what makes for a well-designed site or a poorly designed site after looking through all these examples. What would be on our list? And you can either put it one way or another. You can either say a good site, is, a good site has this or a bad site has this. Because it's really saying the same thing. You know? It, it, you know, avoid what you do in a bad site and you might, you're, you're well on your way to having a good site. Okay. Quickly recognizable. You should not have to guess about where you have ended up. All right. It should be stated very clearly as soon as you land on a site. And do keep in mind that when I talk about landing on a site, the way search engines work, you may not necessarily land on the site's homepage. If I were to Google something, I'm liable to um, end up on any of the pages. So ideally, I would want it, no matter where I ended up, to immediately know what that site is and what that site's about. Now, how would we code that? How would we make, what would be something that we would do to make our site instantly recognizable or quickly recognizable. Yes? Put the company logo on each page. And where would we put that section-wise in our HTML code? In the header. Right. So this is about, this typically is going to be in the header section. And things that we can do, name of the company, Maybe a brief description of what the, the, the company does. All right. Um, using the company's colors, using the company's logo, and probably putting that stuff in the header section of the page. And it's going to be right at the top. Good recipe to make your site instantly recognizable. And I don't care what your business is. If I Google on the Ford Motor Company, they've done that on their site by, again, keeping the color scheme and using their logo. And there's a quick link that tells you, gives you an overview of, of what the company is about. Now, some really big companies may actually have separate sites. For example, Ford Motor Company might have a site for, and you guys didn't see any of that, but um, 
might have a site for stockholders, might have a site for employees, might have a site for um, consumers. I just went here and went to this and notice again, logo, their slogan up in the header, and then they have an easy navigation here. I'm going to add something to the list of a good website that might not be apparent based on the tests that we've had here today. I'm not texting someone, so don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, and that is that a site ought to work across platforms. And what do I mean across platforms? Well, there's Mac versus PCs, there's Internet Explorer versus uh, Edge versus um, what are some of the other browsers? Safari, Google Chrome, Firefox, and so on plus desktop versus mobile, exactly. So, for example, let me pull up this page. If I can type. All right, here's how this page looks on a desktop machine. Here's how it looks on a mobile device. I wish I could put them up there at the same time, but as you can see, it looks good on both. All right, it looks reasonably good on both. I was going to ask the question, why do many sites have gone to this kind of ma uh, navigation? Whereas if you click on it, the menu drops down like that. And the exact reason for that is because of mobile devices. If I click on that, then the navigation pops down again. It looks like a mobile application. So, a big consideration uh, that is, that's always been a consideration, but is even more so a consideration now that the mobile element has come in, is making sure your design works across platforms. Now, we're going to have a unit um, or a section of this class devoted specifically to that. In addition, there's also a uh, whole class that discusses how to design pages so that they are uh, mobile compatible. Um, because we just scratched the surface in this class. But that would be another consideration, is to make sure that your page works across other platforms. Nothing is more, fr or there are a few things as frustrating website than to go to a page and have it tell you that you need such and such browser. Or you go to a page on a mobile site and you have a giant screen's worth of information squashed into a tiny little screen on your phone where you can't read any of it and you can't navigate and so on. So that's a huge consideration for web design. What's another rule for good web design? Yes. Okay, I'm going to paraphrase that a little bit, uh, and I'm deliberately not going to use the word accessibility, because when you talk about accessibility in web development, usually you mean something specific. Um, but uh, I will say good, clear 
navigation. All right? So that users know immediately, you know, where they are, what are the other places they can go, um, what, the, what, what to expect once they get there, know what pages they have visited. That's a consideration. We've talked about the visited property on, on links so that you can see sort of where you've gone and so on. All these things are important. Really, um, other than, I, I talked about there being different flavors of bad websites. And one of the flavors of a bad website is um, the website that's just too busy, that has just too much stuff going on and it's distracting. The other flavor of a bad website is a website where you can't find what you're looking for. may not look horrible, might not be quite as obvious as some of these other ones, but that's very frustrating for a user to think that you know where you're going and click a couple times and you can't find it, or you try the search and that doesn't give you any good information, or whatever. So really, one of the key complaints I hear when people criticize a website is saying, I don't know where to go to to find the information I'm looking for. All right? So good navigation both deals with making the links look good, making the links stand out, making the links stand out, I'll say, being consistent about where you put the links, and having a logical organization of your site. So I may know what to click on, that this is a link, and if I click on it, I'm going to go somewhere else, but my site ought to be logically organized so that when I click on it, I'm heading in the direction that I think I am, and I'm, I'm going towards the information that I'm looking for. All right? And it ought to be consistent. You know, if you use a color scheme, if you use a position for links, um, that ought to be um, universal. Uh, again, let's back up and talk about some of the things that we can do, again, with what we've learned so far to achieve these things. One of the things that we can do to make our site look good across platforms is use percentages and M's instead of an M number of pixels. All right. So if I say the width of something is 70% instead of 700 pixels, that will help me get my site more compatible on mobile devices. Good clear navigation, have it stand out, be consistent in logical organization, deals again largely with the nav section, putting the nav in a consistent place and then style that nav section a certain way. One of the things that we talked about before with Apple, uh, I think it was Apple site or one of the good sites, is we talked about it being readable. And again, that's one of those things that may not seem like it's worth mentioning except that you find a lot of sites where they're not readable. What would affect how readable uh, a site is? What would affect how readable the text on a site is? Yes. Size of the font. What else? The style of font. What else? Yeah. The, 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 if images are used, if not, just the color combination. You know, if I use yellow on white, it's not going to be easy to read. Or if I use yellow on a dark blue, it might be easy to read. What are some other things that we talked about? Um, that constitutes good design. I actually thought of one a second ago, and it almost goes with quickly recognizable. That's why I hesitated before I took this down. But, I guess this is, this is another way to put it, but it matches the corporate identity. And we talked about this when we looked at 
Apple, that the fonts, everything are very consistent. And again, that helps with the recognizability of it, but also helps in creating and setting a mood. All right? You know, you could have a website made for kids that had a lot of fun content in it, but if it was presented in a very plain um, black and white sort of way, then it probably wouldn't be effective in getting kids interested and in wanting to go to it. On the other hand, if you had a page that was meant to be providing very serious information and it was done in, you know, um, very simplistic primary colors, childlike, um, with a lot of silly animations running around and so on, um, again, it wouldn't create the right mood. It would sort of destroy the credibility. We could add to some of these things. We could talk about, um, you know, the, the um, how do I want to put this? Um, things as grammar and spelling count. And these days there's no excuse for having misspelling because you could always copy your, your text in a word and do a spell check on it. All right? Um, we looked at the, um, the um, again, the Penny Juice one and it had variety with an E. I don't know. Maybe some people wouldn't be bothered for that with that, but that sort of, in my mind, damages the credibility of the site when I see misspelling, and it doesn't look particularly professional. But that would count as well. There is a certain style in writing for the internet, so having text that is well written, all right? Um, people don't necessarily read stuff on a site uh, like they read uh, a book, and so on. All right. We do want our site to look good, but not at the expense of these other things. If I was going to summarize what makes a site well designed in a few words, I would say that well designed sites allow both the user of the site and the organization to achieve the goals that they have for the website. All right? So people come to the website with something in mind, you know. If I go to um, Ling's Cars, I probably want to buy a car. Will the design of the site help me find and buy a car quickly? If the answer to that is yes, then maybe it's well designed. Now, what's Ling's perspective, what's Ling's goals? Ling wants to sell cars, and he wants to sell cars, as many cars as possible. Well, there's good, there's a connection. He wants to sell, the customers want to buy. And if both of those goals are achieved, then the site is well designed. If they're not achieved, if one or the other are not achieved, then the site is not very well designed. So in my mind, it's not about making good-looking fonts or great color combinations or lovely images or anything like that. It's about achieving the goals of the site. Websites are a form of communication. And whenever you have a form of communication, the goal is to communicate something, to get the message out, to get the user to do something that you want them to do. And from a user's perspective, for the user to get the information that they need, or for the user to perform the action that they want to perform. Maybe they want to order a product or whatever. And if those goals can be achieved, then the site is well designed. If those goals cannot be achieved, then the site is not well designed. On Wednesday, we're going to start talking about the process of achieving this. In other words, we've talked about what makes a good design today. In next class, we're going to look at what is the process you go through? Because good designs don't happen by accident. They, you don't just sit there at your keyboard and start typing away and have uh, a great web design uh, come out of it. Good web design requires substantial planning and consideration. And for your project, I have a methodology that you're going to follow that will hopefully lead to 
a well-designed website. So we'll talk about that methodology and we'll talk about the process that you go through in creating a good web design on Wednesday. Are there any questions now? All right, we'll see you up in lab.